Okay, so Quinn has been on a roll lately with multiple models coming out of them. So honestly, they've been releasing models so quickly that I haven't had a chance to even keep up with making videos for them. So the Quinn 3 Coda has been a very big success for them. They've also released a smart translation model, not to mention their own image generation and editing models, which perhaps while not as good as Nano Banana, are pretty impressive in themselves. And then also just earlier this week, they released the Quen 3 ASR, which probably deserves a whole video by itself. So I may come back to that. If you are interested in me making some videos about the Quen ASR or some of the other models, let me know in the comments. I'll certainly be playing around with those models for myself. But in this video, I wanna talk about Quen 3 next. So this is a really fascinating release in that it's basically one of their experiments that seems to have gone very well and they're releasing it. And while perhaps this model isn't as good as the Quen 3 Max or some of the other Quen 3 mixture of experts models that they've released, this certainly has an unbelievable amount of potential to not only influence their models going forward, but I think some of these ideas are going to be picked up by other labs out there as well. So it seems the goal with Quen 3 Next is a few different things in here. One, they're trying to make something that they can train a lot faster and perhaps then train for the same amount of time, but on a lot more tokens. And then secondly, to basically get better inference efficiency out of this and to try and get models that are going to be faster to use and at the same time be more intelligent as well. All right, so there are a number of key things that they're doing here. So to start off, this model is an 80 billion parameter mixture of experts model, but it only has 3 billion parameters active during inference, which is insane. And if we compare that to some of the other mixture of experts models that they've released before this, we had things like their Quen 3 235B, which had 22 billion active parameters. And even their small one, the Quen 30B, which had three active billion parameters. So this is roughly the same amount of active parameters as that 30B model, but the model itself is much bigger. And they talk about that this model is performing comparably to that 230 billion parameter with 22 billion active parameters there which is really surprising because the overall model is almost a third the size and the active parameters is a seventh the size of this. So what are the actual changes that they've made? So they've changed a number of things in here. One of the key things being this new hybrid attention mechanism. And I do think that this is interesting. If we go back to GPT OSS, they actually went with the same attention mechanism that they had in GPT-3. So they weren't exactly going to give away what they were using for even GPT-4, let alone GPT-5, etc. So it's quite possible that the proprietary models are using new attention mechanisms that are perhaps are more akin to what Quen 3 is using here than something like GPT-OSS. The second thing is that while this model is extremely sparse in inference with literally, they're talking about here of 3.7 percent of the parameters active, which opens up a whole bunch of questions of how many parameters do you actually need for each call if you've got a lot of experts in your mixture of experts. And this is where this model definitely shines, right? We're looking at something here that's got 512 experts. Compare that to Quen 3's previous mixture of experts, which only have 128 experts in there. And you can even compare that to GPT OSS where the 120 billion parameter model has 128 experts and the smaller 3 billion parameter model has only 32 experts. Now, one of the things that I found really interesting about those models was the fact that they had very small amounts of active parameters. And you could imagine that this is what the big proprietary labs are going for. They don't mind having the big model if they can benefit from having a small amount of active parameters so that they can try and get inference to be as quick as possible as they're going through these things. Another way that you could think about this also is that with each of the experts that you're adding to the model, you're allowing those parts of the model to specialize for different tasks more 
as well. And while each token is going through perhaps different experts, it's not as simple as just saying this expert is for code, this expert's for creative writing, that kind of thing. It does seem that this model benefits from having so many more experts. Now, the other thing that I think is really interesting here is that they're moving to multi-token prediction. So there have been a number of papers over the last few years that have looked at, rather than just predicting out one token at a time, this idea of trying to predict out multiple tokens at a time. This helps a lot for things like speculative decoding, where you want to use a smaller model to prime the big model. But it's also been a really interesting area of research of where people are working on models that generate groups of multiple tokens going forward. And there's not a lot to think that that idea is not going to work out. If we look at something like the Gemini diffusion model, we can see specifically that kind of thing going on, where it's generating groups of tokens, not always in order, as it's actually generating the tokens out. So this multi-token prediction allows you also then to get better at inference. And even going back to one of the earliest videos that I actually made was about the paper UL2, which actually proposed a bunch of new pre-training objectives that were multi-token objectives there. And suffice to say that I've heard from multiple people now that this is one of the better ways to do pre-training than just doing next token prediction. Okay, so looking at the pre-training for this model, interestingly, they've just trained on 15 trillion tokens. And I say just, I guess, in a very casual way, 15 trillion tokens is a very large amount of tokens to train on. But they talk about training on 15 trillion tokens from Quen 3's 36 trillion token pre-training corpus, meaning that this model is getting close to, or perhaps even occasionally performing better than some of these models that have been pre-trained on twice the amount of data going through this. The other thing that's fascinating here is just how efficient that pre-training is. That while this model's been trained on less than sort of 10% of the compute cost of the Quen 3 32 billion parameter model, it's actually performing better for some of these tasks with this. So not only are they getting better results, these results are just so much cheaper to train. Now, my guess is the fact that they've only trained on 15 trillion tokens, there's probably a version of this currently training on the full 36 trillion, or perhaps even a slightly bigger model than this training on the 36 trillion to create a model that's going to be state-of-the-art for a lot of these benchmarks. Now, speaking of the benchmarks, I'm not going to dwell on these a long time, but it's very interesting that they've given us both base model benchmarks and post-training benchmarks. It's interesting to compare the base model on this Quen3 Next versus the other Quen3 MOE models. So you can see here that sure enough, the bigger 235 billion parameter with 22 billion parameter is doing better on things like MMLU. But that's not surprising if it's been trained on double the amount of data. You've got to then wonder for a lot of these tasks, if this had been trained on the full corpus, the same as that 235 billion parameter model, would this actually be outperforming that model? Now for post-training, they've created a couple of different versions of this. They've created a thinking version, and they've also created just a plain instruct version. We can see looking at the benchmarks for this thinking model, that the Quen3 Next is certainly outperforming the 32 billion dense model from Quen, but also generally outperforming the previous thinking model with a base model that supposedly had been trained on double the amount of tokens there. So let's jump in and have a play with the model. I'm really curious to see about the speeds of generation, to see if we can see this multi-token generation when we try it out, and just to compare on things like the thinking, but also to test it out on tool use and function calling to see exactly how well this does for those kinds of tasks. So let's jump in and have a look at this. All right, so if you want to try this model out and compare it to other models, etc., you can actually do this quite well in Open Router. So here you can see I'm bringing in both versions of the model, and I'm also bringing in GPT OSS 120 in here. I'm just asking it a very simple sort of question. We can see that, sure enough, a certain amount of thinking, it does seem to change depending on what the topic is, etc. And if we compare that to the GPT OSS 120, I actually think that the thinking is better in the Quen 3 next. It's certainly longer, it certainly thinks for longer. 
That said, the GPT OSS certainly has the GPT styling of liking to do tables and doing all the kind of things that the GPT models tend to do in here. You can see if we compare it with the Quen3 Next Instruct model, this is giving us a simpler output in here, although it does seem to cover a lot of the same sorts of things. So I haven't tested that extensively. I would encourage you to test it on your own prompts in here. You can also test this on Open Router via code. And I would say make some comparisons basically on the providers as well. So you can see here I'm using two providers with a fallback. But we really should try it. Obviously, we would expect the Alibaba version to be the perfect setup for this. So it's actually pinging their API. But there are other versions up already. I'm noticing that over time, they're actually seem to be getting more. As I've been playing with it, I think another one or two have been added today. But always check, right? Even though the pricing can be hugely different, do you really want them retaining your prompts and training on your prompts, right? Different providers will have different policies about this. You can see with Deep Infra, it's zero retention, no prompt training, etc. Anyway, if we come in here and look at running it via code, we're certainly getting nice markdown outputs, etc. You can run obviously the normal instruct version or the thinking version here. Both of them are supported. Playing around with it, it's not a coding model from what I can see. That said, it can certainly do basics. If I ask it to make an advertisement for itself, it comes back. It actually wanted to show the logo. I think this is actually a collab error and not its code error. And the thing that I found was really quite cool is that if you click on this, this actually takes you to the model on Hugging Face where you can check it out more. Okay, so just testing this out with a few different kinds of prompts it does pretty well. Definitely the thinking is quite long in here. The other thing that I found really quite fascinating is that it likes to think in English. So while it's multilingual and you can ask it to give things out in different languages, you can see here I'm asking it to do it in Thai. It does all the thinking in English and then works out bits that it's going to have in Thai, which I thought was interesting. I know that a lot of the Chinese labs and perhaps even Quen in the past have done sort of thinking in Chinese and English. So I came to test that where I basically asked it, okay, you're a Chinese assistant and only speak Chinese, and yet we still get all this thinking done in English, and then it goes to the Chinese for the final answer out. I don't think that's a huge deal or anything like that. That could be just because of the way that they've done the post-training for this particular version. And it will be interesting to see for languages that there's not a huge amount of data. If you do the thinking in English, do you still get good responses out in your local language at the end? Another thing I wanted to test out was streaming tokens and looking for this multi-token prediction. And sure enough, you can see, I basically set this up to have a pipe command between each of these. And it looks like we're getting multi-token prediction. So just to compare that, if I do this with the OpenAI API and go for an older model like GPT-40 Mini or something, you can see I'm getting a pipe for every subword or every token that it's basically going through here. But the same thing here, we're getting multiple tokens coming out streaming back. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what's happening at the server side, but this is definitely a good sign. There are other proprietary models out there that do this already, but it's interesting to see this implemented. Finally, I haven't had a, a long time to test out the agentic abilities with this, but so far it's definitely looking good. So it is interesting that they're recommending their own agent framework and pushing that. I find that yes, using that with some tools, etc., it seems to be doing quite well. It does seem that the model is set up to do the whole sort of code act idea of writing some code server side and writing some code and then running that to do multiple function calls at a time, etc. But this is something I certainly need to play with a lot more and test it out with some other agent frameworks as well to see, okay, how does it respond if it's not its own agent framework? Can we still get the same quality responses out? So overall, I say this is definitely a really interesting release, not just for the quality of the model that we're seeing, but also for the direction of where some of these Chinese models are going. And for me, that's the fascinating part of this that they are being open, they are sharing these experiments, they are setting it up. And you've got to wonder, okay, is DeepSeek and ZAI and Kimi already working on ideas like this? And we're going to see those come out from them. Certainly the pressure is on 
for companies like Meta, if they are going to make an open model, how good are they going to make it? And are they even going to be able to compete with these Chinese companies? So check the model out. I'd love to hear from you guys what you think. Like I said earlier on, if you want me to make some videos about the Quen ASR, etc., let me know in the comments below. I'll probably be playing with that model this weekend just to see how it goes. All right. As always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.